Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Moxie webinar on professional registration and practices via Embod and Route to the Journey of Self Enlightenment. For your information, this webinar is supported by MySet Malaysian Society for Engineering and Technology. Hello, my name is Faiz Latib from Smart Training and also the Chairman of Competency and Training Working Group of Moxie and will be the moderator of this session. I hope everyone is safe, healthy and comfortable at your places. Thank you again for spending your time today to discover and understand better about the topic which will be discussed and presented by two speakers. Firstly, by TSIR Yo Cheng Kwan from UVA Academic, Academy Holistics, Vice Chair of Sustainable Development Working Group, and secondly, TS Anwaruddin Saidu Mohammed, CTO Reservoir Link Energy Berhad, and also Moxie Executive Committee. Before we go further, please allow me to share with you, to highlight to you the webinar etiquette, the standard one by Moxie. Firstly, is to allow the time given for this session will be flowing at the at the given time. We hope uh, you can please mute your microphone so that the speakers or the presenter can uh, can fill the time to to actually explain the messages and also the presentation. Secondly, in order to ensure that the the, the bandwidth is is suitable and also enough for everyone. Please, we appreciate if you can turn off your camera during the presentation by our uh, speakers. And lastly, if you have any question, please don't worry. Please drop your question at the chat box. And at the end of the presentation by the two speakers, we will open for the Q&A session. We will definitely go to your question and we'll discuss further. And as always, before we start our event, please sit back and relax. Enjoy this safety moment video by Moxie. Hi, I'm Michelle Yeoh. As an actress, I've been in many dangerous situations on screen, but I always get to walk away. In real life though, so when you're in your car, follow these safe steps and help save lives. Make sure you stick to speed limits. They're there to protect you and others. Slow down at high-risk areas like junctions, sharp turns, and before traffic lights. And watch out for pedestrians and cyclists. To avoid collisions, keep a safe distance. Remember the three-second rule. Pick out an object, count to three. And if you've passed the object before the count of three, you're far too close. We all have a role in road safety. Follow these safe steps and play your part. For more road safety advice, visit safesteps.com. Mm, thank you, thank you, Michelle Yo, for uh, reminding us about uh, the road safety. Um, at the moment, as uh, since uh, the economy is open back, I believe that uh, most of us are going to be back to office and will be driving some of us. Please take care of yourself and of all for our family as well. Ladies and gentlemen, next, without further ado, I would like to invite our first speaker, the SIRU Cheng Kwan, or we call IRU, to take the session forward. Please welcome IRU. Right, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I think we can have the slides on, uh, Faiz. Sure. Well, I think in its audience, I see quite a number who are IR and TS and also doctors here. Yeah, So it is excellent. And let's have a very good discussion here. So the topic of this particular sharing is professional registration and practices through my board and route to journey of self-enlightenment. Now, the most important word here is self-enlightenment, right? So this is what we're going to focus on. It's not just the registration. It's not just the administration. It is the reason why you want to be an IR or TS or whatever it is, why do you want to be professionally registered? So that's the key question to this particular webinar. So if you're already professionally registered, then we also want you to reassess what do you really understand by being a professional? So this is the core of this particular webinar. Next slide, please. 
So this is just a very short background of what I do, what I've done over in the past. If you total up, this is more than 40 years of working experience. So right now, I'm actually a performance coach with uh, in in South in Central Africa right now. So this is just a bit about me. And one of the key things to take away from this is that I have been a professional engineer assessor for the chartered engineer in the UK for more than 20 years. So now I'm also assessing uh, for MBOT and helping them to look into assessment. What do we mean by assessment and what does it take to be able to qualify as a professional? So it's not space science. We will unveil that all through today's uh, webinar. Next. Next. <clears throat> right. What's the objective? Now, the objective of this webinar is for us to reflect, right? It's enhancing our potential and increasing our opportunities. It's not about the title. It's not about people recognizing the title. It's about what you can do with the title. What do you understand from the title? And how can you enhance your career, especially now when times are very, very challenging now? So you also will realize that there is quite a number of people out there. They may be chartered engineers, IR and TS, and some are even doctors. They are out of a job. So having a title doesn't secure your future either if you do not know what to do with it. Next. Now in next, in the current endemic situation, I would even call it pandemic. A lot of us are still calling it pandemic. We have gone past that stage. It's already two years now. It's called an endemic now. So in the present state of endemic, the question here is, what are we doing about our employment? Are you unemployed? Are you being retrenched? And how's your business like? So this is the key question that we want to bring in to address why you need to be registered as a professional if you have not done so. And if you have done so, are you aware that there are a couple of things that we should be doing and can be doing as a professional? Next. And next. Right. If you look at uh, before that, uh, five, so I move back. Right. If you look at this scenario, right, being an employee, following our job description and working according to companies, rules and regulations and policies and procedure. Now, what's wrong here? What's wrong if the industry fails, like the oil and gas industry is getting bad? It, has, it was bad for the last five years, coming to six years now. Right. And what if the company shut down? If the company shut down, the question to us will be, what do you do with your job description? And on this note, same thing. If you have got a job description and you are an IR and TS, what do you do about this? And some of us might say, ah, I'm going to apply for another job. But it's not about the job. If the industry fails, then your job and your job description is not quite relevant anymore if you do nothing about it. Okay, next. So we are suggesting next. Yeah. The best way to predict the future is to create it. Yeah, it's not to wait for the bosses. It's not to wait for somebody to do something for us, but we have to take the action. So this is by Peter Drafka, my favorite statement. So the secret here is to have a sustainable career. So what does it mean by having a sustainable career? It's about synergizing professional and personal excellence. Now, one key word to take away from here is CPD, right? You will not understand what the word CPD means if you are not a registered professional. Right? So you need to belong to a professional institution and you need to practice CPD. So the word to take away from here is continuous professional development. What CPD is? Next. Five back to the slideshow. Yes. What is CPD? Now, if you are not registered as a professional all that you are doing now is only practicing initial professional development so the key thing here is that the moment you are registered as a professional doesn't matter what it is you can be irta chartered chartered accountant chartered scientist chartered surveyors whatever it is then you will have to practice continuous professional development this is why we mentioned that if you are not professionally registered you probably have not practiced cpd right next and this will be a clearer picture on why we say you must practice cpd next on this note 
in a normal work environment is employee job description and company and this is just not good enough so we got to go above the line so above the red line here is get ourselves professionally registered in any profession whether you're a scientist your lawyer your doctor your accountant you need to be professionally registered next and the reason you get professionally registered is because you want to follow a new code of professional conduct not the job description you see below there but now above the line you have to practice continuous professional uh, code of conduct and ethics so what that means is next you will have to practice cpd now does it make sense earlier on i said in about initial professional development ipd now cpd and the relevance to job description so when you practice cpd what it actually means here is next you are actually enhancing your job description and making it more enriching why because you're learning new things we'll describe what cpd is later right by cpd is not a requirement by the company but cpd is a requirement by a professional counsel so we got to understand the word between a counsel and institution and academia and a company there are four words i mentioned here yeah let me repeat counsel professional institution academia and company there are four different words here and so four different words mean four different things and for four different purposes so we got to be very very clear about this so having a phd or having a master's does not make you a professional because you are not professionally registered in the professional having an academic phd means you are the highest level of your academic achievement having a professional registration means you are at the highest level of your profession right so if you're a ceo then you are the highest level of your employment so these areas we need to understand very clearly so when you practice cpd it means the ability to practice self-regulation and empowerment so that's about the gist of it next so looking back into what i just mentioned there are two things you have to do one is self-awareness in leadership and the other one is cpd next so what happens in cpd here is i've just described to you what we have to do more than just the job description next so in job description you just do your job now with sale and cpd you tend to do a different action so you have taken a next level action up the scale next which means you grow from this area to a professional level and next so this is why when we say we practice cpd next when you practice cpd you actually revisit your job description and make it more enriching and enhancing next okay so this is the reason why we say you have to practice cpd so this is part of sale the self-awareness in leadership which is a program that i've designed but i'm not going to go into detail here what I simply want to say here is that sale comprises of four psychological models, which is life, career, knowing what you know, and also Maslow's hierarchy, self-actualization. So the whole idea about humanity, about being a professional, being a human, is to get to the level of self-actualization. And how does that work and what has it got to do with professional journey? Next. So this applies to all of us. There are 11 areas in our lives here. So this is an area where question is, how do we focus? What do we focus in what we do every day? Next. So because this is a professional registration uh, development webinar, we just want to focus on the four things. You see on the circle on the top left, those that are marked in red, those that are marked in red are all the CPD components professional development component. So that's why when we mention that you register as a professional, you are actually practicing CBD. So when you practice CBD, you are actually on a journey of self-actualization. So there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm not going to talk into detail, but this is something that we can think about and have a discussion during the question and answer. Next. So the relevance of CPD, the relevance of professional registration, the relevance of your highest echelon of your profession is actually towards a journey of self-actualization. And that's the highest level in any human need. So this is why we said having a title means nothing if we do not know what to do with it. 
So it's not the title, put it at the back of a name card or in front of a name card just to look good. It is a title where you are supposed to act on it to continue professional development journey and practice CPD. And that is where the secrets are. That is where you'll find a lot of things that we do not know can be known here. Next. Two things here. This is the final slide for myself. So something from Einstein. Insanity is doing the same thing again and again and expecting change. So that's insanity. So question is, have we been doing the same thing again and again? The next thing is also Einstein. Without changing the pattern of our thoughts, we cannot find any progress. So that's, of course, in short, it means we got to shift our mindset. Now to shift our mindset, that is why we're introducing two keywords here, self-awareness in leadership, get to know what is all this about. And number two is the easiest route is practice CPD, which is you are already on the journey and you need to find out more. Next. So this is the last slide that I have. So this slide is just a brief description of myself. What is SAIL? So SAIL is self owners Leadership, a program that I conduct on my yacht. Next. And this is SAIL. That means in knowing doesn't mean doing, right? So if you have good knowledge, the question here is, are you practicing that knowledge? If you know you have got a lot of knowledge, the question is also knowing doesn't mean doing. So we got to act on it. Next. Just to share, I'm also doing your surveying. I'm also doing uh, professional uh, coaching as well. And next one. And I'm also doing quite a bit of work with the Royal Malaysian Navy at the moment. So this is to share with you that when you practice CPD, next. When you practice CPD, what it actually means is you are enriching yourself, you're enhancing yourself with more professional network skills, and knowledge next right so this is the last slide that i have so as mentioned i'm also actually assistant royal Malaysia navy with training the people whether these other ranks officers to get themselves at the state of professional status so just a quick rundown of what we are sharing here to enlighten and on that note i'll leave it to you Fais, for anwar to take over thank you very much guys all yours anwar Okay, thank you, Mr. Joe. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for all of those who have you joined today. Uh, let's continue from there onwards. Thank you for Mr. Yo to bring it all the way here. So the next part of the another 15 minutes or so, we will cover a little bit more in depth on uh, what is it that uh, that the professional journey means through MBOT. <clears throat> and uh, that means I think most of you uh, somehow or other will be related to some technical roles, I believe. Uh, whether you are an engineer or an engineering profession related uh, personnel uh, in your organization or uh, you are doing a technical hands-on work <clears throat> irregardless uh, it, it is important for you to understand you know what does it really mean professional journey why i am bored how does it help you how does it benefit you more importantly how does it enrich you like what already we discussed just a little background very brief background about myself uh, i'm currently discharging my duty as warning like uh, what already been introduced I'm also a very active member of uh, SPE, Cal section. Um, in fact, majority of my technical domain is actually uh, where I practice uh, and I publish is actually through SPE. Uh, so I found that has been very uh, uh, enriching to myself. I've been with the SPE for almost 17, 18 years now. <clears throat> so now let's start the context of uh, how do we put ourselves together in the context of society environment and economy so I, this is my favorite slide for anyone in fact including students i always talk about this in today's world in fact if you have known what's going on in the, particularly this year is related to how consciousness and conscientiousness this two keyword has been ever grown very rapidly especially during the pandemic uh, not to blame the pandemic entirely for so many reasons of course many people lives and livelihood has been affected but i think it also had contributed quite a bit for awakening awakening of understanding how do we deal with uh, the environment and the people around this globe in everything we do so the engineers and technologies play a very important role uh, in the world uh, on, on maneuvering how do we achieve and best uh, state of our uh, civilization in balance with the economy and, and the society and environment so that is i think very very crucial 
if one cannot figure out how to make a sustainable system of out of ourselves within our practices in our life and also how do we make the practices in the world i think we have a problem and it's not sustainable and end up we're going to make a crossroad which eventually had to go into catastrophic uh, outcome lah, eh? so net some of the races of net zero carbon and and sustainability practices and esg commitment is all relevant now and has been relevant all the time but i think the conscientiousness has improved quite a bit yeah recently so a sustainable outcome must take into practice of balancing the need to have economic output uh, as as you can see here economically responsible let me get my pointer out uh, and you must also be very responsible to ensure the the you bear the consequences of our action to the environment and eventually it will relate to the, the society itself because there's no way we can separate these two if there's anything bad happen to environment it's going to be really bad to all of us in in the, in the habitants of the world so this lenses you need to really understand because the context of these lenses has been embodied in no matter whether it's i you know bm or mbot it is embodied for us to be a responsible citizen in our own way of practicing our profession so uh, in in one of the way that we all uh, figure out that you know we need to have, have a, a system to entrust this and encroach this to each and every one in this planet whether you're working or non working also is through the sdg goals yeah sustainable development goals 17 of them so if you uh, think a lot of people proposing the 18th but anyway as today there's only 17 so uh, please try to understand how you can contribute as a person may not be completely attributable to your working environment or your JD, but you must understand what is your role in these 17 SDG, if not all, some of it. In fact, if I just uh, basically be preferable to use, uh, you know, uh, sustainable materials in, at my home, I already contribute to climate action. Yeah. If I uh, feed somebody because uh, of the compassion, I already talked about the uh, SDG number two. So in this way, as a professionals, we need to have a better understanding to not only be aware, but actually to educate people. So I believe that the first slide to first two slides is now the previous one and current one to talk about not only about who, you know, how good we are as a worker, but also much more than that. So I hope everybody really, you know, uh, uh, understand and embrace this. Now, let's talk about the roles of the technology, uh, uh, technic uh, technicalities and innovation. I think this is a very important part. Uh, this has been uh, practices. In fact, I think commonly uh, Petronas also strongly believe in this um, through Moxie and Petronas uh, close collaboration. We sort of understand that the roles of technology innovation play a very important role uh, in the ecosystem of oil and gas industry uh, and also the people who are, have, you know, uh, the patrons of the industry. And we as an industry, in order to coexist together with the rest of the world and also to sustainably produce cleaner and more responsible energy to the people and it's global we need to ensure the context on technology and innovation is not only about producing profit but safeguard the environment as you can see and provide responsible governance in terms of governing the ecosystem we talked about the three circle so how do we monitor and ensure there's a calculated monitored embodied into the way we work and positive social impact is very important. It's not all about just making money and then finish job, provide the KPI, you know, uh, shots the uh, goals and eventually become a winner out of that. There, there's no winner if you have impairment in the social impact, meaning to say that you have a negative impact to the environment, negative impact to the society where people are not conscious at all about the environment, not conscious. So we are actually producing carbon chain, yeah, the carbon molecules. Definitely the carbon molecules is... Uh, going to have a impact to the environment but we can counter that with the right practices so that those are those are the things continue to value chain uh, that that also another way where i think all of you have heard about energy transition and also stepping out of uh, making it to more cleaner uh, practices and cleaner molecules to out there so that it's a uh, waste is also considered to be converted to resources all this element technology and innovation play a role and you all going to play a very important role going forward as a technologist or engineers uh, in a way. So that's why I just highlighted this slide for a while, just put it there. Now, let's talk about career ladder and career lattice thinking. In fact, I myself, in many ways, uh, has been in this picture here before. I think many of you probably know what I mean. 
the career ladder that typically we talk about if one do not have a broader understanding of the profession and how do we grow together will be a constipated way of just looking at this ladder you must make sure you reach this ladder and you make sure you climb this ladder fast that's the way that in a normal scenario we think because we always feel that everybody is a competition to each other never be able you know and we never think about harnessing each other to grow to a bigger cake to a bigger system to a more sustainable system and so on so that's why we think always a constipated way of looking at it now the moment you see this instead of this small ladder to a big way of you know looking into a paga you know it's, 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 it's a fence that all of you have to go through it's a hurdle for example and we will think about how can we combine and harness each other and professionally practice the right things in order to have a career lattice that is wider and more um, uh, more uh, what do you call it ever reaching to everybody not only a very constipated way of looking into it so that why you just have to look beyond the jd that is empowered to you jd is just to provide the road it's a job but the career and also the professional journey is completely a more wider view so the new career structure that you all should be aware through this journey is initiative to go beyond the company routine requirement so that is why you can have you can enhance your career in terms of depth and the width <clears throat> so how do you do that uh, only when you actually think beyond through the pro continuous professional journey where it is actually a development by yourself for your self development so you got professional institution <clears throat> iem is one of those yeah and for, for example uh, the uh, registrar like embot they have uh, we have they have empowered the tep's like eh, the technology expert panel like moxi to um, to institutionalize the journey for people right and then the professional registration like we talked about through the registrar like embot and bm and also the uk council for example <laughs> which we'll talk about it more later and professional network where is professional network professional network is just a people so the like minded people who want to embrace the professional journey and continue to practice is your professional network and this is the biggest gain of all when you become part of it I think that three elements should be able to help you to embrace the new way of thinking about career so instead of choosing this let's choose the right one here which is actually that can benefit everybody so professional development code eh, or professional <coughs> uh, development journey so on a cpd uh, it means that all of us are able to and uh, in addition to the roles, policy and procedure we have already in place, this is going to bring you to another level of everybody able to continuously develop themselves, pace according to your own pace, uh, according to your own uh, understanding. But at the end of the day, doesn't matter whether you're a technician, you're a senior engineer or the super senior engineer or principal, te principal. At the end of the day, if you are embracing to be a professional technologist and prof professional in the industry, the only matters that differentiate is actually your attitude towards the profession yeah, in terms of your values to the profession, not necessarily purely on the knowledge. Knowledge is one thing, that's right. But at the end of the day, the professional attitude really make a big difference when we try to balance the three circle we talked about just now, right? We talk about uh, uh, the, uh, the ecosystem of a whole environment, the society, and also the economy. Now, let's talk a little bit about the professional registration. So, uh, Akta Jurutra 1967, where the BEM was born, one of the longest or the oldest uh, registrar in our country, in Malaysia, came out of Akta in the parliament. So, lately in 2015, uh, there was Akta also. The act in the parliament has been uh, passed on, where in 2017, MBOT was born. So, it's fairly recent, MBOT. It's not that many years old. The pain point was BM was looking into very rigid uh, in a way why it was formed was only for engineers uh, who have a degree and so many number of years who are practicing and eventually the practices has to be embodied and proven to become professional engineers and they have a different different category of registration. Whereas embod to ensure that more people uh, at a different level whether you are a having certificate and have some many years of experience or diploma with many years of experience, degree, PhD. The viewpoint is the same. To be a profession, there are certain values to embrace. That is how the MBOT was uh, you know, enacted 
and the, the pain point behind it. In 2017, it was, act, it was enacted and eventually uh, the IEM was born much earlier. Now the MBOT currently establishing the institutionalizing the journey through TEPs, yeah? technology expert panel for different, different sector. For example, oil and gas sector, manufacturing, aerospace and so on. For oil and gas sector, it is uh, MOXIE specifically. My set is even bigger, uh, you know, encroaching to various uh, industries, for example, you know, manufacturing, even academic and uh, oil and gas uh, sector, also marine, for example. So, and then uh, it was, as I mentioned, only uh, degree only here, PhD and below. In fact, all type of uh, certification, even if it is not fully uh, in the system, you know, with a proper uh, moderation between uh, MBOT and the candidate, then eventually it takes some years to, uh, or some, some steps to eventually make them accepted. So as long as you have the right kind of uh, academic content in what you have done through your academic institution. So at the end of the day, uh, the professional engineer for, for the journey that uh, chosen on the left, and you will be known eventually to become professional technologist or certified technician known as TSTC or at the back is called PTEC, yeah? professional technologies PTEC after the name. So it's not all about it's not all about title. Eh? So title is not the only thing here. Actually, to be honest, title is the is the uh, uh, is the byproduct of you actually putting up yourself together and a commitment to go through these things called competence and commitment. Lah. So what we really gonna focus uh, through the journey is more of a commitment. Obviously, competence is to be through the professional network that you already uh, we talked about. Your A, B, and C are supposed to be enhanced yeah, through your affiliation with the people and the practices and the programs that is potentially you can uh, enroll to. So the, the system is actually very similar to Engineering Council of the UK, uh, where the institution have embodied very similar concept here, of here called A, B, C, D, and E. Knowledge and understanding, application to practice leadership. And finally, the most important one is the commitment to ensure that this can be enhanced through the professional practices, which is communication and your interpersonal skill and very important, importantly, professional conduct and ethics. The E, professional conduct and ethics, is the is the commitment, the single commitment that we, me, Mr. Yu and few other accessors has been continuously drilling through people to ensure that you really understand what does that commitment means is much more than your vision and mission of the company and the profession, the the values that typically you have in the company. This is about yourself, not about where you work. It's not about which company you work. It's about yourself, your values and your code of conduct and ethics that you commit through this journey. So similarly, in terms of the framework itself, the C, D and E, very similar to the previous slide, which we call core professional values. The general values commonly you can find in all workers you know the basic and understanding of fundamental of the knowledge understanding the current practice and future practices most of the people like you the company will organize many things for you to understand all of this the technological advancement the gap of the technologies and practices and then the application of itself but here you are the c d and e while many of you are able to enhance it through your work but we really hope that, you know, again, it's about you and you need to focus on core professional values about you. What are those values that can make yourself better in context of the lenses we already talked about? Environment, you know, uh, balancing with the society and the economy and so on and so forth. So these values are about the people, the process, the economy and the context of environment must all encroach all these values. This is just an example of the framework which will be continuously drilled through your assessment before you become professional technologies and professional technician. And the same values will be used for your professional development later through the CPD. So <clears throat> the E, which I mentioned just now, the single most, or I would say probably the most important one that in fact, not because it is important by itself, but it's also a place where we have many people lack into. Many, many people are so good at their work, when it comes to sustainable development, they have no clue about how the sustainable development should be encroached or should be practiced or should be achieved. They manage a very systematic safe practices in, in compassion with the people. Also, sometimes we have, you know, we have a very big lack here 
some some of the management roles we have a very good we have made quite good in in um, you know uh, uh, in delivering the roles and kpi when it comes to people we lack a lot in developing others so those are the the, the key issues that we would like you to uh, you know know and eventually uh, enhance now professional framework if you look into the framework of a uk council very similarly as a person we have three embodiment to ourselves related to profession knowledge skills and our attitude we talked about attitude just now your attitude is what really matters knowledge through the company and the, of course the the institution like for example i talked about spe as an institution i enhance my knowledge big time through spe over the 18 years actually Very, a lot and uh, through the papers that i presented others presented through my affiliation to the uh, to the spe and so on so i'm sure many of you may have the same thing uh, maybe you are also in a community of practice in, in your company also. The skills is another thing. The skills is about actually doing it or experiential skill. The skill set that you have dealing with people or equipment and so on and so forth. So these three blocks are embodied to you. So and how do you practice it is by understanding the responsibility, the communication, the interpersonal skill, the people skill, for example, and the leadership. So having these three by not having this uh, way of doing things also a big gap so i guess that's why the framework was made in very much embodying or the whole this picture here okay. eventually the commitment to the society your profession the course of your conduct eventually will make an active contribution and when you are crossing the border to become professional technologies or certified technician it's not all about all about title and all we don't want to happen is until you get the title, you're all happy go and uh, you know you are you are so much into uh, very excited and so on. The moment you get it, you become very passive. So that is why we you know impose CPD, continuous professional development, to ensure that all of you somehow or other do self policing, and we also do policing of you to make sure you actually practices, and then eventually you want to retain to become professional in the. Uh, your uh, it, uh, on on the profession that you carry. So let me, okay, so it's an example of the institution that, uh, for example, UK. I just highlighted UK is quite established lah in a way that uh, all the institution cover almost all kind of career, all kind of aspect. There's so many number of institution in Malaysia. Also, we have like myself is one example. Moxie, uh, IEM for sure is the biggest one of the biggest one. So um, any of you, no matter which profession you are, what kind of a career you are having. There's always a place for you to practice this. I don't think there is any lack of institution to actually house you to make sure you can practice this. So that is probably the word, the, the thing that you have to last worry about. So uh, let's talk about benefit of professional registration, which you can actually get through the, um, uh, the journey through MOXIE or through the, of course, MBOT. We can be a conduit uh, for sure. Uh, MOXIE can be a conduit. But then the day, eventually, the, the register, the registration must be done. So the benefits are, you see, when you become professionally uh, affiliated and you are framed in a way of how to practice it in the ecosystem, in the context or lenses we talked about, it provides a benchmark for people, to the public, to the employers, to the clients, for your clients and so on. But again, it is also can work the other way around. Double H word. If you go around represent the represent the, the good name of the profession and you do something bad, it actually can actually you know back backfire to the whole system. Lah. So that's why it's so important to ensure that you know when you provide a benchmark representing the entire profession, you really know that you carry the big load of responsibility and amanala to be exact. So uh, and then second, maintain knowledge, skill, and commitment. Because of the continuous professional development, you know, you can have the ability to do all that, uh, inshallah, and demonstrate your commitment to the highest professional standard. Uh, we uh, embod together with the TEPs also working very hard to ensure this also can be done, where the uh, the uh, professional standard can be embodied in certain uh, system of work in the industry, both downstream and upstream. Uh, enhance the status. Yes, this can be, oh, yeah, of course, it's enhanced status, but for me, the status shouldn't be that you should carry the title that the title should carry you as simple as that if, if you know what i mean so if the title carry you then it's it's actually not longer balance already you should carry the title you should bring the honor to the title rather than the title bring honor to you then only is sustainable and legal credibility yes 
you you know some of you can be a witness participate participant or expert expert view and that brings some credibility and regulatory authorities uh, like the agency certain agencies and so on also observe the uh, the title right okay so again it's all about self actualization according to the hierarchy that you already been uh, familiarized now uh, psychological need i mean as you go from the bottom up you must eventually as a human being you have to satisfy all the bottom one before you go for the final one self actualization and we hope that as a part and parcel of this professional registration journey it enrich the way of you become full fledged being yeah to be yourself the best of yourself <clears throat> so um and cpd let's talk about cpd this will be the last two slides i think so the continuous professional development must en encompass the angle we already talked about remember we talked about the the angle of skill attitude and also the knowledge so these three must be reflected in the programs that eventually you will enroll into continue to practice your professional development and the cpd hours will become a determinant to make sure that you can continue to practice otherwise you know we tend to be lacked if there is no policy so unfortunately you know the self policing is available but there's also registra will police uh, against the professionals who are actually into the journey so the cpd will have various type you know um, uh, understanding and awareness training on technical skill mentoring program involved in community development program uh, in, involved in sustainable development program uh, in, involved in a uh, the, the program that enrich your professional uh, uh, related to your profession or subject matter. So all this is a part, a part and parcel of the uh, CPD uh, program. And very importantly, if you're able to develop others, it's also very, very important to become a coach and mentor. And every one of us at one stage can become a very effective coach or mentor to our people uh, within the work or also to the general public. So uh, initial professional development is a EK way of uh, doing it before you actually uh, uh, become a professional member where you can you can actually start up getting familiar with the professional development uh, by initial professional development. And then eventually uh, that's self learning like most of it. And then eventually you can also practice CPD. So very similar to UK council system. If you have time, I, uh, you know, I would probably will even uh, ask you to go through uh you know because it's a similarity between the uk council you can actually just go to type google you know uk council of certification you will have to know that actually whatever we presented have very much similarity to what has been practiced in uk council <clears throat> so this is my last slide actually uh how much more time we have we got about 20 minutes plus for the discussion so let's talk about the registration assessment process itself like we already mentioned, uh, generally speaking, there are two categories here, yeah, um, uh, which is professional technologies and certified technician. It's a very similar process, not so much different uh, as compared to very small type of criteria in terms of assessment between professional technologies and certified technician. But before being any of those, you have to be a graduate uh, technologist, graduate technician, for example. So in which where the minimum requirement for graduate technologies is actually bachelor degree level six uh, MQF. Yeah, the quality framework <clears throat> and recognized by the board. But uh, if there is an exhausting list available in the website of MBOT, uh, but again, there's also caveat here. If there are certain certification that you think it is actually worthwhile to be considered, you can actually put up a request to MBOT and they can get through. It just take a little bit longer. Because they need to, once whatever listed there is something they've already gone through. They know the content of academic, the framework of the academy and so on. If it is not there, then it's your responsibility to submit everything that is being asked for. Then they evaluate and hopefully, inshallah, they can accept you as a graduate technologist. And this will take a little bit of time, uh, probably about um, uh, you know a month or two months for you to you know screen through. The application itself is very straightforward, actually. It's all online yeah, through MBOT website. You can go to website. The website is so user friendly in applying to become a graduate technologist. If you meet all these criteria, typically also plus three years of working experience, then you will become a graduate technologist uh, for, for going through the assessment later. 
Then immediately after you accepted as a graduate technologist with the requirement of the academic, with the right experience, like I mentioned, three years experience and so on and so forth. Once you validate that in the after the validation, the board sit during the board sitting, I think it's a quarterly board sitting or monthly board sitting, whichever that uh, during the I think it's monthly that uh, this application will be routed through. Then um, uh, this will be you are qualified for assessment. Then you will be notified to uh, pay certain fee as per prescribed on the right hand side, the chart here. These charts are also available in the website. Then you can also uh, apply for to be attending the assessment. In fact, the assessment framework already presented to you just now in one of the slides. Remember the ABCDE, the whole thing of assessment and eventually the CPD is the same framework. So the framework of the assessment follow the same thing, which is ABCDE also. So more emphasis on the uh, C, D and E, particularly the D and E, which is the commitment side of it is what will be assessed further. So then eventually after a, a, a satisfactory performance in the assessment and uh, once the board has approved you to become a professional technologist and certified technician, then you can become one. Uh, for example, particularly for marine and oil and gas sector here, which we are many of you probably you know attending from that side of it. But if some of you not, that's completely fine. The, the, the process is still the same and MOXIE can become a conduit to attend your assessment. So people like uh, Mr. Yeo is assessor, myself is also one of the assessor. We have many more assessors within the sector and uh, you will be assessed either by TEP. For example, uh, MySET and MOXIE is the TEP technical expert panel on behalf of the MBOT or you can also be accessed with the access source directly by MBOT. But right now, everything done online, but it can be physical as times come and the endemic become more uh, manageable. Yeah. So if on the right for the certified technician, if you are a diploma and below holder, so it's very similar thing also, then you apply through the website and then uh, eventually once you become a professional uh, accepted as a graduate uh, said the technician then you can apply for assessment and one the decision to allow you to take the assessment then eventually you will be accessed once the access the result is available then the application to become certified technician also is all online one the board approved then you become a certified technician and the entire process is hrdf claimable if the companies would like to get you through the bulk registration, I think right now the TEPs are, can assist you to do bulk registration for the staff from your companies. Uh, we can assist that. But however, you can do directly through the website. I think that's basically the last slide for today. Lah. So uh, we can go for Q&A. And if you have very specific question on all the slides, or if it is not related to slide, go ahead. Yeah, no, thanks for that. I think we have uh, very good questions from Mio and also Terence. So I hope that answers your question. Go ahead. Okay, let's see the questions here for many of them. Okay, Mr. Mio, I think Mio Adli, right? If I spell correctly, if any one of you want to unmute and speak, please welcome. But let me read out this one. Can you please share the main difference between assessment made by BM? An assessment made by MBOT, okay, fine. Next one is how is the TS differential in IR? Okay, fine. Uh, okay, actually, I probably will un already answer this, but again, the assessment by BM, um, uh, the, there is a writ. I believe that there's a written assessment. You know, there's a, a logbook that you need to prepare and so on to ensure that you can demonstrate the professional journey that you have already undertaken. Yeah, it's very similar to IPD we talked about, but here. You haven't been the professional engineer yet, but you got to have a logbook to prove the experience on the module related to your profession or the skill set. For example, you are a mechanical engineer, must be related to mechanical engineer. Lah. And typically, you will have a mentor to do that. And I am, but uh, I will not represent BM to talk about it. But there is a major difference from MBOT. MBOT here, like I mentioned, we focus more of your commitment, C, D, and E. So right now the assessment is still oral. Yeah, you come in and it is through an interview. It's either individual interview or group interview uh, where you will be accessed through your CDE framework. A and B, we probably know from your resume. And believe me, we are nowhere in close to actually tell you how good engineer or how good technologies you are. 
For example, let's say you're a welding expert. I'm not the welding expert. Let's say you are a, you know, um, a data scientist. I'm not a data scientist. I'm good at what I do, but I cannot be a superman in every other field. That uh, So that's why we focus on CD and E. But contrary to BM, that is a IPD, similar to IPD, but you got to have a logbook related to someone who know about your career to some extent. So it's very much different. And uh, how is it different from TS and IR? For me, it's still both a professional journey, but the embodiment and the context of the values is very importantly, the code of conduct and code of ethics is very different from BM and BM board. It's very different. In fact, one of the example called benevolence doesn't exist. In fact, anywhere around the world, just search actually, I did spend a bit of time in Google, try to look, look into other people's uh, value system. It's very different from MBOT uh, in a way. So, Mr. Yo, you want to elevate any on this point, the difference between BM and us? Maybe. Uh, I've already answered, I've answered that in the uh, chat room, but uh, I think it's quite extensive if anybody wants to know more. But most important is do not compare within the two just embrace one will do if you qualify for iem or b you can if you qualify for bm well and good if you cannot qualify for bm then let's go for mbot and the most important thing here is to practice the professional code of conduct and ethics it's not about the title the quality of the title and the question is always uh, which one is better ir better or ts better or chartered engineer better it's all the same it, why because it's us who is practicing the code of conduct it's not a title yeah we have a one question from terence also which one are the most useful one for yourself right i think industry if you have tstc inspector okay this is really depend on the academic qualification also la, you know in a way so if your academic qualification you have degree already and above or you are planning to take degree that's fine you can always become professional te technician and then eventually become professional technologist too nothing stopping you so it's not about which one is useful, which one relevant to you, which one is the correct one for you. I think that's the right answer. So depending on your academic qualification, la, then you, you know, if you already have a degree, just go ahead uh, to the journey of professional technologies that I just had a chat for you all to have a look already just now. OK, I think all of that has been answered. Any more question from the floor? Maybe, you know, don't worry is, you know, you just is like, uh, you know, want to make it a bit um, uh, less formal. So as you can see, Mr. Yo, he looks very young. You know, he's also a bit partially uh, formal there. We are not that old, uh, you know, Mr. Yo will not disclose his age, me too. So we are not uh, that you can, you, you can actually tell them I'm 62, so it's not a secret. Yeah, it's an open secret, but you know, he looks very young still because of his commitment to uh, his uh, carrying himself in terms of his health. Anyway, let's go through. If you all can unmute, anyone can ask any question, go ahead related to professional journey or CPD, which one is correct, your doubt, we try to clear clear your doubt too. Any more questions? You all are very clear about the journey and any of you want to take journey, some of you already taken the journey. If you have any suggestion also, please go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, there is one more question in the chat box. Uh, ah. yes. Okay, pra Prakash Ambalat. Okay, uh, TS NYU, I'm currently waiting for professional assessment and board for TS for marine sector. Is there any guidance for me to pass? Uh, I think I will leave it to you to come in a little bit on marine side of it. I think your yes, your gang. <laughs> Thanks, Anwar. Thanks, Anwar. Thanks, Prakash. Prakash, there is no difference at all, right? Whenever we do any assessment because i'm also assessor for marine there is zero difference in how we assess each industry and there is also very deep very minimal difference i would say there's almost no difference when we assess a ts and a tc and in moxie what we do is we actually mix if you're a ts and tc we mix you in the same group the same question the same interview is consistent right through you may be a ts you may be a tc the questions are the same because like what Anwar has mentioned, leadership, management, communication, and professional code of conduct and text, they're all the same. So we do not make any difference. And as Anwar also mentioned, we do not ask about job description because we are doing professional interview. We are not doing a job interview. So 
I hope I answer your question there, Pagesh. Yeah, good one. Yes, please go ahead. Any more? Uh, so as I said, relax, don't worry. Uh, it's almost like a chit chat. If you all want to have a direct questions, please go ahead and voice it up. I think it's good that you can ask as many questions as possible and you soon realize that in what we have just described between Anoa and myself, I don't think many people talk the way we do. Most people talk about all oh, the route to professional engineer, fill up the form, do this, do that. We are not talking about the journey. We are talking about why you must take this journey and most important is what you do. What do you do after you get your professional registration? So the why is important here. It's not how to get there. It's what do you do with it? Because I believe a lot of us are already qualified. We have years of experience. So it's not about training. It's not about testing you. It's about challenging you to take the next step and what is your commitment and contribution towards the community. So I believe all of you are uh, going to get into the process very soon. <laughs> we have we have quite a few who are IRTS and doctors here. Maybe we yes. can hear your yeah. views as well. Yeah, you are you are equivalent to us. So we are no higher than you. So let's listen to your view. We have IRTS and also doctors yes. here. Ask me. Uh, technologies, ask me. How are you? Technologies, ask me. Dah lama tak jumpa. All okay? It's time to speak. Muted. Eh? Ah, so now we test the communication skill. <laughs> yeah, but me, he, so he used to be, uh, yeah, he came through the process very quite this year. I think sometime this year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we have, we have here Dr. Azlan and Dr. Farhan. Are you both registered doctors? Are you both registered TSTCIR or just doctor? Medical doctor or, you know, philosophy, doctor of philosophy in engineering field. <laughs> doctor, any any input, doctor? Or kita sekarang time nak tanya soalan kepada doktor. <laughs> Hello. Kita nak tanya dok COVID nineteen ni. Yes, yeah, Doctor Azlan, go ahead. Uh, my name is Doctor Azlan. So... Hello, Doctor Azlan. Hello. Yeah. Ah. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. No, okay. Yeah. Clear and clear. Okay, so uh, basically I'm fellow. Uh, I'm doing uh, research here. We can't hear you, doctor. Can you speak louder? Uh, research. Hello. Okay, research on. Okay, so basically, trying to planning to apply for the ES uh, ES uh, certification. Okay, good, good, doctor. Because uh, having a doctorate is the highest echelon of academic excellence but having a professional title is the highest level of your profession so if you have both then you consider sudah cukup lah yeah so basically uh, what i did is we, we can't hear you doctor can you speak louder to your mic or whatever Maybe you're connected to wired one, the wire, the, the connection lah, maybe I feel, okay. Or maybe Dr. Farhan, your views. Dr. Farhan Husna Hussein. Or anybody else, Flora, maybe any, any questions for us? <clears throat> any correspondent, any, any, uh, if you want a bit more detail, uh, you can take the contact, uh, from, uh, Moxie, be in touch with, if you all want to, uh, register through Moxie, maybe Sophia, I will just jot down here. Sophia at moxie.org, for example. So any, Right, I think very quiet crowd there, so I guess. Uh, so probably if there's no further question, you know, just drop the. <clears throat> yes, Dr. Aslan. OK, 
Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah better now. You now. Better, okay. So basically, I'm a, a doctor. I'm doing research in terms of uh, CO2 capture. Okay. And planning to apply for the professional uh, certificate. So my question is, in terms of uh, research or academic, how does this um, professional certification uh, will contribute to the development? Okay. <clears throat> okay. May I answer this, yeah? Uh, hmm. Doctor, I think one of the key things to remember it is it is professional registration, yeah? It's not a certificate. Okay, so it, it's, <laughs> there are two things here, because certificate uh, only demonstrate uh, our uh, competence, yeah? Certificate yeah. Uh, defines our competence, whereas <laughs> registration defines our commitment. So these two words, commitment and competence, right? So if, whether you're an academia or not, in terms of MBOT, we do not have an issue with that as in Engineering Council UK. But if you register with Lembaga Jurutera, you might have a problem because they say you have not been working in the industry. This is also my thing on why I answer Mio earlier on. <clears throat> that MBOT actually grows people. They allow people to develop themselves to a different level. Whereas BEM is BEM. Yeah? I won't say more, even though I'm also BEM. So this allows you. And being an academician is great to be in MBOT. And one of the key things is also if you have got your PhD and if you work in university, it's also our role to explain to the student. Now you've got thousands and millions of students. After they graduate, most of them are quite blur, you know. They don't know what to do only because the lecturers are not telling them what they are supposed to do, right? So that's my view on this, uh, Doctor. Thank you for your response. Most welcome. We got one welcome. question from Loga Murthy. Uh, what is the difference between registration of engineering technologies with BEM, engineering technologies with BEM, and the MBOT professional and graduate technologies? The engineering technologies with BEM, exactly the right company. Uh, I think Mr. Yo, you will be better to answer this. Wow, I think uh, Loga, you have to go to the MBOT and BEM website to find the definition because if you want to become a professional, you must understand this terminology which is actually part and parcel about our questions to you. Because if we do not understand the difference between the graduate technologies and engineer and MBOT and BEM, then as a professional, it's hard for us to coach and guide other people. So my recommendation to you is go into BEM uh, website, read about what they talk about CPD and professional, go into MBOT website as well, and one last thing is also go into the engineering council website. So you once you go through these two websites, you will understand the difference and how we can grow ourselves further. Mm -hmm. These are all very administrative questions. Yeah, so it is not really something that uh, we should worry about, but it's something that we must know if we are a professional. I think this is a new for you. I from what I've known recently from uh, you know my colleagues, it's recently launched one a new membership grade, which is called Engineering Technologies, uh, an accreditation in Engineering Technology degree. In the past, BM only accept core engineering discipline. You know, yeah? it's by Bachelor of Engineering Mechanical, Bachelor of Engineering, but related to, for example, chemical technology. Um, uh, you know, nowadays, there are, you see, the skill requirement keep on developing. For me, la, the way I see it is that nothing is cast in stone. We cannot say that the academic qualification of the past, which is a classical degree, I'm also used to be a classic, I mean, a classical degree holder anyway, a Bachelor of Engineering Honors Mechanical, Bachelor of Engineering Honors uh, elect Electrical and Electronic and Instrument, for example. So those things is fine. But now the development is going in more of application because solving more trending and emerging problem. So we do have a, you know, a plant process related technology, for example, a chemical technology degree, for example. There are so many varieties. In fact, the data science also being offered now. So how do we go about it? So can we say that they cannot be a professional technologist or they cannot be a professionals 
they cannot be professionally registering just because they are born recently and they have to go through a new uh, so you know new provision in solving different recent problem we cannot so that is why i think mbot is a little bit very open you know the looking into professional technologies with uh, any bachelor of engineering technical discipline degree you know of course lah right. humanities right. and science is different chapter altogether i'm not talking about it where else mbot i think they also i mean bm they learn a lesson i think so i'm not very clear about it but i know the background and the pain point of them launching a new grade of membership is actually for this reason to incorporate and add on to the technology degree yeah which is actually engineering technology so called which is actually with accredited engineering technology degree then with that you can apply become engineering technologies with bm so i think that's the right. pain point of the detailed process of it you can download and understand more right thanks thanks on now for that and i think to this question uh, we really need to understand this that uh, anwar has already demonstrated in the picture just now about registration routes between bem and mbot and one of the key things that BEM is doing now, they are, they are panicking. You know why they're panicking? Because they have been set up since 1957. And to date, there are 300,000 engineers registered with Lembaga Jurutera. And out of the 300,000 engineers registered with Lembaga Jurutera, only 15,000 are professionally registered. Can you imagine? This is less than 10% of those who want to become an IR, only 10% or less qualify to be IR. And this has been happening for over 60 years now. So that is why when MBOT comes out, MBOT follows the UK model. UK model has evolved from those days. And now they are more encompassing to technicians, mechanics, technologists, engineers, and scientists as well. So they have evolved. So this is why when a lot of the graduates and diploma holders suddenly have a great influx to uh, embod to develop themselves this is where bem starts to panic and say hey we want a bit of the pie you know we want to take a bit of the pie so now let's uh, accept technologies and let's accept diploma as well well this is something which is very uh, you can see i'm quite fired up when I talk about this because it happens to me 35 years ago right i cannot be registered as an ir why they say oh i practice management engineering i was in the navy so until today after 35 years this has not changed so that's why we are helping people to say hey if you cannot go ir you cannot go lembaga jurutera let's go mbot because it's equivalent why do i say it's equivalent because both of this are sanctioned by the acta and the parliament one is Akta Jurutra, one is Akta Technology. So on that note, both are equal because both are under the parliament. So there is no who is higher than the rest. Okay. Yeah. So this is why we do this kind of webinar so that people are aware and let's take value. Let's move forward. Let's not talk about history and let's not compare who is better than the other. The best person to know who is better than the other is the person himself who is talking. Right? It's us <laughs> who knows ourselves better. Thank you. That's absolutely right. <laughs> I think you are the only person who can judge yourself, lah, to be honest. Okay. All right. Uh, any more questions? I think we are coming to an end. We just got about two minutes more. If there's any last question I can attend to before we can take the picture together. Yeah. But as I as just a wrap up on the whole thing that we did today, we want to make sure that you are aware and sometimes we also clarify the misunderstanding that people may have. I mean, not to be blamed, but of course, like, you know, uh, you can only know what is available on the social media whatsoever. But here, I think it is a very important opportunity for everybody. Like, you know, now finally, because for me, I always believe knowledge should not have borders. It should be equally available and equitably available to everyone and accessible. Same goes for opportunity to professional develop too. It shouldn't be, uh, you know, so constipated and shouldn't be, uh, you know, where only a certain group of elites or whatnot, it should be available for everybody. Everybody must have access. I like that principle and I think I will go with that principle and MBOT having this is a big plus. And I hope all of us can poise and take this opportunity to professionally develop ourselves. It's an opportunity for you. If not you who invest in yourself, believe me, nobody else will invest. <laughs> we have to invest in ourselves. You know, you can invest in car and gadgets and so on. But the most important thing to invest is yourself because 
if you think you are precious, I mean, the value of everything else around you is actually less precious than you. Lah. You must feel that you are the most precious for yourself, the most worthy, the most precious. Yeah, paling mahal sekali. If you think you are the most precious, you have to invest in yourself lah, more than investing in anything else. So it's an opportunity to invest in yourself through embracing a journey. So I wish you all the best. So uh, let's go ahead and take one uh, selfie of everyone. So let's come and on the photo. So we take a group photo before we leave. And uh, we'll you know what? It's important to take the group photo just in case we have to interview you. Then say, ah, you know, I no. remember this guy. Okay. So you get a bit of a brownie points there. <laughs> <laughs> I jot down my email there. Sophia is our coordinator. And uh, there's, there's Anwaruddin at moxie.org. If you have any specific question that, you know, you forgot to ask, go ahead to email. I'll try to reply. Kalau boleh, buka mask lah. Kalau tak, ambil gambar tak tahu siapa. So come, let's on the, everyone on dah? Sudah on ke video? Maybe Sophia will help us to take the picture lah. I hope all of you got some level of a better understanding than before coming into the webinar. Okay, right. anyone more? Anyone else? Let's join. Let's get the full, the cinema theatre become full. Kita tengah ambil group picture with the group mode. So, dia macam theatre lah. Okay, anyone more? Final call? Group shot eh? Okay, jom kita ambil Juan, uh, Sophia or apa, Raimi eh? Okay, okay. alright. Ready? One, two, three, up. Okay. Hopefully, all of all of you have uh, you know decided or eventually will decide the best for yourself. Lah. Okay. 